Now, section 9.4 um, takes what you saw in 9.1 and um, takes the algebra up a notch. We're going to use the same uh, type of substitution or elimination, but in 9.4 it's about systems of nonlinear equations. So we could have parabolas, circles, lines, uh, you know, all these different shapes, ellipses. So the shapes then, you know, can lots of things can happen. Now, if you look at these two equations, this top equation is an ellipse. I know, I make beautiful ellipses. Think about the bottom equation. We know the bottom equation is a line. We could possibly have a line that hits that ellipse twice, that hits that ellipse and just skims across it just one place, or never hits it at all. So we may have one solution, two solutions, or no solution. So the algebra is going to guide you. Now, as you're doing these, if you put these into a system like Desmos, you can check your work, and, and they will pinpoint exactly where they uh, intersect, and we will talk about that. Now, it says to solve this system by substitution. What I like to do is look at the very simplest equation, so that would be our linear equation here, and reduce a little bit of rearranging, so it either says x equals or y equals. You pick, doesn't matter. I like the fact that our x is a very simple, positive, wonderful x. So let's move this y to the other side of the equation by adding y to both sides. So we get x equals 4 plus y. Now what's really great about that is we know what x is, so we can replace it right into the other equation. So we're substituting in the x we find from our simple equation into our more complicated equation. So what do we get? Well, that thing, 4 plus y, is our x. So we take out our x and use parentheses, please, to uh, show that we're going to square that quantity. Plus 4y squared equals 16. Now be careful. When we square that, we have to use our rules of algebra. So it's a good idea to write it out twice. So you remember to distribute or FOIL. Now when we distribute, we get 16 plus 4y plus 4y plus y squared plus 4y squared equals 16. So all I did was distribute this, the 4, that's those two, then the y, that's those two, and just listed them all out. Now, when you see that the highest power is a square, that means that it's acting like a quadratic. So let's put all of our y's together and let's get it equal to zero as if it's going to act like a quadratic. So we get 5y squared plus 8y. Oh, and we subtract 16 from both sides. We get zero. That's wonderful. And now we can just solve this by factoring by taking out a y. And so we get y equals 0, or 5y plus 8 equals 0. So the y plus 0 is solved. Let's solve the second one. Let's subtract 8 from both sides and divide by 5. So that's negative 1.6. Okay? Now, these are points. So we know that x equals 4 plus y, that's what this told us, and so let's plug in the two different points we get. If I plug in 0, I get that x equals 4. So that's the point for 0. If I let y equal negative 8 fifths, so 4 is 20 fifths, 5 times 4 is 20, so 20 fifths minus 8 fifths, 20 fifths minus 8 fifths is 12 fifths. So that's approximately 2.4. So if we were to graph it, we would say negative, wait, let's, <laughs> let me actually write my, my x first. So 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. Goodness gracious. 
and then negative 8 divided by 5 is negative 1.6. So if we were to graph it, and the graph has been staring us at us right here, this point is the point uh, 2.4, negative 1.6. See, 2.4, negative 1.6, that's that point. And here is the point for zero. So what we've got will show up exactly on the points of intersection on the graph. So that's wonderful. And, and you know, Desmos is a great, very easy to use graphing calculator if you want to check your work on that. Okay? Any questions about example one of the nonlinear systems? Let's keep going. Now, if you look at this one, this one here, we, we haven't had a chance to look at, but it's something called a hyperbola. It's either going to look like that, or it's going to look like that. This one actually looks more like that. And then that's a square root. And so it's either, you know, it's going to be a square root that's, it's actually, I think, going that way. It's either going to hit it once, or it might hit it twice, but it's definitely going to hit it, and it's just a matter of does it hit it once or does it hit it twice. Um, I guess if it was in the middle here, it would never hit it at all. So, so we have some, some possibilities of what could happen. So what do we do? Well, this one is a definite good substitution. Substitution is what you're going to use quite often for these ones. So I'm going to take my y out, and in parentheses, put in the square root of 1 minus x. So let's do that. So we get 4x squared minus that value squared is equal to 4. So that's what's going to go right inside there. So we're going to put in the square root of 1 minus x. Now the square root of 1 minus x, when we square it, the square root pops off. But be careful, there's still a negative out there, so I'm going to use parentheses so that I don't mess that up. And so I'm going to get 4x squared minus 1 minus x equals 4. Now let's distribute that negative 1. We get 4x squared minus 1 plus x equals 4. Now that's a quadratic. We know that's a quadratic because the highest power is a square. And so let's solve it. So let's subtract 4 and get it in a nice order. So we're going to do 4x squared plus x minus 5 equals 0. Now I think this is a really good candidate for slide and divide. So we're going to take the 4 and slide it over and multiply it by the 5 that's over here. So I'm going to kind of do that over here. So that would be x squared plus 4x. Wait a second. <laughs> x squared plus x minus 20. And then uh, we need the factors of 20 to have difference of 1. So that's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 4. And so we uh, have to divide off the 4 that we slid over. So divide by 4, divide by 4. If it's not divisible by 4, just take this 4 and put it on the x. If it is divisible by 4, like that one, just divide it. And so this factor is to be 4x plus 5 and x minus 1. And we're going to solve each one. And we get x equals 1 or 4x equals negative 5. So x equals negative 5 fourths. Now here's the problem. These are, um, there is a square root in the problem. And so you must plug these into this square root to make sure that you don't get a zero, okay? Or I'm sorry, a negative number. Zeros are okay. If you plug in one, you get the square root of zero, which is fine. That's this point right here on the graph. And if you plug in this, you get the square root of nine fourths. Let's actually write out what the points are. So if x is one, y is the square root of one minus one. Now let's plug in negative 5 fourths. So we get y equals the square root of 1 plus 5 fourths, because the negative that's already there 
is multiplied by the negative here makes it a positive. So what is that? Well, that's 4 fourths plus 5 fourths or 9 fourths. Now, to take the square root of a fraction, just take the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom, and then we've got a point. And so that's 3 halves. Oh, that's, that's our y. Our x is negative 5 fourths right here. And our y is 3 halves. So again, if you entered into a system like Desmos, you would see that we have two points of intersection here and here. And those are the two points that we got. Any questions about example two? Any questions about two? Okay. Now, there are few systems where elimination really work well with these types. But let's just analyze why we could use, they call it the addition method, I've always called it elimination. Um, so you see here we have an x squared, we have a y squared, we have the equal to, and then we have plain old numbers. We don't have all of these equations. The ones we saw earlier, the one equations had x squares and y squares, but the other equation didn't. So you can only do this if you can line it up perfectly like that. Okay. So then you can use exactly the technique we did before. Now, we could get our x squares to be opposites very easily, one of them positive one and one of them negative one. Or we could get the y squares to be opposites, one of them 20 and one of them negative 20. You could do that, but I think it's a lot easier to deal with ones. So let's just multiply this equation right here by negative one. Because then our front x squared would be a minus, and then that would be great. So the top equation, just write it. The bottom equation, let's multiply by negative 1. So I get negative x squared. I already fed her game. Um, plus 4y squared equals negative 16. Now we're going <laughs> to add these together. And so our x squareds are eliminated. That's what we wanted to happen. Our y squares, we have 9y squares. And then 25 minus 16 is 9. So then divide by 9, and y squared equals 1. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Anytime we inflict a square root, you have to remember to put a plus or minus in front of whatever you're square rooting. So this is y equals plus or minus 1. So we technically have two y values, or two points, that these are going to be crossing at minimum. Okay? So, let's take, it doesn't matter which equation, let's go with the top equation. Where the y's are sitting, I'm going to put in a positive one and a negative one. Let's watch what happens. If I put in a positive one, I'm going to get x squared plus 5 times 1 squared equals 25. And so I get x squared plus 5 equals 25. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides because you want to get that x squared alone. So we get x squared equals 20. And then I got to take off the square by square rooting. And so I get x is plus or minus the square root of 20. Well, what does that mean? Now remember, this is I plugged in y equals 1. So that means when x is square root of 20, which we should reduce, we'll deal with that in a minute, y is 1. Or when x is negative square root of 20, y is 1. So we got two points out of that. But we still have to plug in negative 1. We haven't plugged in negative 1 yet. Let's do that. Well, if we plug in negative 1, so when y is negative 1, we get x squared 
plus 5 times negative 1 squared equals 25. The square on this makes it become a 1. It becomes the exact same thing as before. x squared equals 20, x equals plus or minus the square root of 20. Now let's talk about a better way to write the square root of 20. 20 is 4 times 5. So technically we should write that as 2 radical 5. So what points are those? Well that is 2 radical 5 negative 1 and negative 2 radical 5 negative 1. So we ended up with four points. The reason we ended up with four points, if you look in the picture there, the top equation is an ellipse in red. So this top equation is the ellipse. The bottom equation is one of those hyperbolas again. So you kind of get these like uh, symmetrical um, kind of parabola-like things. And look, we ended up with two pieces. Over here, uh, when, so uh, the square root of 20, let me tell you what that decimal is, is 4.5-ish. So look, at 4.5, we're up at positive 1 and negative 1. And then at uh, positive 4.5 and negative 0.45, we're at positive 1 and negative 1. So we ended up with four points. So be careful. When you are the one that inflicts the square root, you got to put a plus or minus. Okay. So that one ended up with four solutions. Yes, yeah, so look what we got. We've got square root of 21 with 1, I'm square, square root of 20 with 1, and square root of 20 with negative 1. We've got negative square root of 20 with 1, negative square root of 20 with negative 1. So we have them, they're a combination, but yes. So that this is the positive 1 and negative 1, and this has a positive 1 and negative 1. It kind of depends on how you solved it, how they're going to pair up but they should all be there. And these, if you could read it a little better, that is a negative for that one. And that ones are negatives. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I plugged in a y value of one and got these points. Then I plugged in a value of y of negative one and I got those points. Okay, uh, any other questions about number three? Okay, let's look at number four. So, uh, let's see, I, I, we can do this a few different ways, but um, they wanted to use substitute, or I'm sorry, uh, they wanted us to use uh, elimination. So, uh, we have to get them in the same order. They have to be x squared, y squared equals number. And the way, the reason they know they can do this is both equations only have x squared, y squared, and a number. So that means this one is not in the correct order. So let's take this one and do a little rearranging. So that would be x squared plus y squared equals 16, and 2x squared plus 2y squared equals 8. Now, in order to do this one, we want to eliminate either our x's and y's. It doesn't matter. So let's multiply. Let's get rid of the x's. Why not? Let's get rid of the x's. Well, this one's already a 2. So if I multiply that by negative 2, the x's are going to disappear. So when I multiply this times negative 2, I get negative 2x squared minus 2y squared equals negative 32, and then I get 2x squared plus 2y squared equals 8. So the t bottom equation I didn't uh, change at all. I just wrote it again. The top equation I multiplied by negative 2. Now, something funky happens with this one. Not only do the x's go away, but the y's go away, leaving me 0 on that side. Now it would be okay, kinda, if we ended up with zero on this side, but we don't. 
negative 32 plus 8 is negative 24. 0 doesn't equal 20, negative 24, so there's no solution. This actually means our two figures never touch. Now, the top one is actually a circle with radius 4. The bottom one is a circle with radius 2. They both center at 0, so there's no way that they're going to meet. See how the one has a radius of 2 at the center, 0, 0, and then the other has a radius of 4 with center, 0, 0. They, they don't touch. So it would make sense that when we try to solve for a common solution, that something funky like that would happen. So if you get a, a nonsense equation, a non-equality, 0 is not going to equal negative 24, then you want to stop. Any questions about number 4? Okay. Let's look at number 5. Mr. Hawk, come here for a sec. We're asking the other math teacher in the house what this, what, 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 what is that called? There's a name for that picture. It kind of looks like, what well, doesn't look like that exactly, but do you know what those are called? Okay, sorry. We just wondered what those were. Anyway, <laughs> so here is a good example where Everything lines up really nice. I, I don't know what the technical names of these are, but they make kind of neat pictures. But anyway, but I notice that we've got our fraction with x squared, our fraction with y squared equals a number. So you can use elimination pretty easy by making these ones opposites. We can do that really quickly because one is a negative and one is a pot, or we can make the other one a positive. So let's take this bottom equation and multiply by negative 1. And so what I'm planning on doing is eliminating that term right there. Okay. So when we do that, the top equation, you get 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared equals 1. I'm not changing the top, not, don't need to. Now multiply everything in the bottom by negative 1. We get negative 2 over x squared plus 1 over y squared equals negative 5. What's really cool is we can add those two together. And um, we've got like terms. We have things that are going to be eliminated. It's going to be great. So let's uh, eliminate those two. So that was the goal. Well, one of these things over x squared, minus 2 of them, or negative 1 of those. And then 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Now, to solve something like that, I think the easiest strategy is to make both sides a fraction so that we can solve it like a proportion and cross-multiply. So if one side is a fraction and you only have one term on the other side, make it a fraction too. Just put it over one. And let's cross multiply. So we get negative 1 equals negative 4x squared. Now we know how to solve that. Let's get the x squared alone by dividing by 4, negative 4. And then square root both sides. What do you have to remember when you are the person inflicting the square root on the problem? What do you got to remember if you're inflicting the square root? Got to put that plus or minus in there. So this is plus or minus the square root of one fourth. Now to square root a fraction, just square root the top and square root the bottom. So the square root of one is one the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so now we have the x values. We got two of them to plug in. We just got to find the y values. So I think this equation just has some nicer numbers. So let me write that down. 
So let's plug in the positive one half. Okay. So we're going to get la 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 la. Let's we're going to get one over one half squared minus one over y squared equals one. That's really disgusting to solve, but I'll I'll show you. I'll I'll lead you through it. One half squared is one fourth. One over one fourth is four. So this means the reciprocal of one fourth. The reciprocal of one fourth is four. That's what happened to the four. Subtract 4 from both sides, which gives us negative 3. Put it over 1, so we can cross multiply. We get that negative 1 equals negative 3y squared. So y squared equals 1 third. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Now, you can leave it like that, but technically that's plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. If you rationalize it, you pop the square root to the top and leave a normal 3 behind. So what does that mean? Well, that one x value has two different y's. So 1 half gets paired up with positive square root of 3 over 3, and 1 half gets paired up with negative square root of 3 over 3. And if you look at the logic of the problem, if we put a negative 1 half squared in there, we're still going to get 4. We're still going to get the exact same values. So negative 1 half also gets paired with square root of 3 over 3 and negative square root of 3 over 3. So this system had four places where they overlapped. Now if we were to graph these into like Desmos or something, they make these pretty like little hourglass sort of shapes and we end up with four places that they intersect. So very good. Any questions about number five? It was kind of a weird one. The algebra is pretty weird. Okay, we have one more problem. And it's the last problem of the semester that's new. Or a new topic. Oh, the square root of 3 over 3? Let me show you that. Okay. So if you have 1 over the square root, okay, let's go back. The square root of 1 third is the square root of 1 over the square root of 3. Now, you shouldn't leave denominators containing square roots, so we have to do something called rationalizing. I think we did this somewhere along the line. So if we multiply by the matching square root, it rationalizes it, meaning it gives you a full 3 in the bottom, and pops the square root to the top. So that's how the square root of one third becomes square root of three over three. Did that help? Good, okay. Now, so that is example five. Last example is a word problem. And um, so let's go ahead and take a look. It says a right triangle has a, pot, a hypotenuse measuring 13 inches in an area of 30 square inches. Find the length of each leg. So anytime they give me a problem like this, the first thing you want to do is draw a, tr a right triangle. Okay, And I draw excellent right triangles. I'm going to put this is my base and this is my height. And they told me my hypotenuse was 13. And so using what's called the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I can find one equation that relates everything I see there. So I know that h squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. Now they also mentioned area. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So that's why I used b and h. So I know that 30 equals 1 half base times height. So technically I have a system of nonlinear equations. I've got this equation and this equation both containing h and b. Well this one's a little simpler. Let's rearrange that one so we can use substitution. So I'm going to first get rid of the half by multiplying both sides by 2. And I get 60 equals b times h. And then pick one. It doesn't matter. I'll pick b. 
And so I know that B is 60 divided by H. Now I get to use substitution. Wherever I see B, I am allowed to stick it into the other equation. So I get H squared plus 60 over H squared equals 13 squared. Let me tell you what 13 squared is. I think it's 169, but let's see. Yeah, it's 169. Let's do that. Now, let's fix this fraction because it, it's not the way we need it right now. So we get h squared. 60 times 60 is 3600 over h squared equals 169. Now what can we do? Well, h can't equal 0 because it's in the denominator here. But there's no way we want it to be zero because we want it to have a height. We want it to be a triangle. So that's not going to be an issue. Let's multiply everything through by h squared so that that h squared that's sitting right here will go away. Now what do we get? <clears throat> well, we get h to the fourth plus 3600 equals 169 h squared. Now it's acting kind of like a quadratic. There are three terms. The powers uh, are the biggest, then half, and then goes away. So let's put, the, put it in a kind of a quadratic order. So that's h to the fourth minus 169 h squared plus 3600 equals zero. So we need the factors of 3600 that add up to 169. I have an idea. Let's go here. So I'm just starting to kind of break it up a little bit. Okay, so that's 30. Did I freeze up? <coughs> Let me stop sharing for a sec, and I'll uh, put it back on and see if that helps. Okay, let's see. It's the last problem, guys. We can't have it mess up now. <laughs> Can you see it better now? It should, the last thing we're at is h to the fourth minus 169 h squared plus 360. Perfect. Okay. So let's think about what could make us uh, 3,600. So first I thought, well, maybe 30 and 120 might be an option, but that adds up to 150. Not quite as much as we need. <clears throat> So what else could we do? Uh, let me try that. So I think 3,600 is divisible by 27. Nope. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm jumping to the quadratic formula. <laughs> okay, so uh, our A is 1, our B is 169, our C is 3600. So we get uh, negative B plus or minus the square root of B e squared, <coughs> which is 28,561 minus 4 times a times c is minus 14161 over 2 a's. And so let's do that. 28561 minus 14161 is, oh, it, it does work out nice. I just must not see in my head where to factor that. So when it, all else fails and you can't factor, guess what? Use the quadratic formula. And so we get 169 plus or minus 
120 over 2. Okay, so let's do these. 169 minus 1, or let's do plus 120 first. <coughs> okay, that's 289 over 2. Now that's going to be h squared. And then h squared is going to be the subtraction. 169 minus 120 is 49 over 2. And then we got a square root. So that is plus or minus the square root of 289 over 2, or plus or minus the square root of 49 over 2. Now heights on a triangle cannot be positive, or cannot be negative. We can't have a negative height. So these ones we're going to throw out. And so our height could be positive square root of 289 over 2, or positive square root of 49 over 2. Okay, now what did they ask for? They said find the height, the measure of each leg. Okay, so we have this equation right here. So 60 divided by the height is the base. So the base is going to be 60 divided by the square root of 289 over 2, or 60 divided by the square root of 49 over 2. And I am so not even remotely worried about, at this point, reducing that down. Like if I wanted a, a real uh, number of some sort, uh, I would say throw that to a calculator to get an exact answer. Um, but that's, that's kind of it. Uh, remember, if it's a real-life application, there are times where the negative version does, just doesn't work. Uh, but there you go. Kind of a weird one to end with. <laughs> um, so uh, hopefully that made a little sense to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um,